Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss compound interest and the use of single payment formulas. In this video, we will define the topic of compound interest and the use of single payment formulas, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of compound interest and single payment formulas falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook 8th edition, 2nd revision. Money today does not have the same value as money at some point in the future. Perhaps over a short period of time, we can add up the various sums of money and accept the net results. However, this does not work over a longer period of time. For this reason, we need tools, tables, formulas, and various economic factors to reference when, is, when it is necessary to compare two complex alternatives. A series of these formulas are known as the single payment formulas. These formulas take some value in time and converts it to an equivalent value at some other point in time. The economic factor that affects this value is interest, or over a period greater than one year, compound interest. Compound interest refers to the interest for a period calculated off the principal and interest from a previous period. All engineering economic analysis is based off compound interest, and for that reason, as we will see, special tables with various pre-calculated conversion factors have been established for our use. So let's run through the general workflow. The goal of any single payment problem is to determine what monetary value would be equivalent at some other point in time based off specific economic factors. The first step to solving a single payment problem is to determine the various economic drivers of importance. These fa factors include number one, the value to be analyzed and whether that value is a future worth or a present worth. Number two, the equivalent value to be determined, a future worth or a present worth. Number three, the interest rate. And number four, the number of periods. Once the variables are defined, we can solve these problems in one of two ways. Either by using the single payment formulas found in the table on page 114 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision, or by using the functional notation version of these equations and referencing the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. So let's run through an example. A business owner puts $12,000 into a bank account with a 6% annual interest rate. What would the equivalent payment be after three years? The solution. The goal is to determine what payment would be equivalent three years down the road had the business owner invested $12,000 now at a 6% interest annual interest rate. Like we established earlier, this can be determined in one of two ways. Either by using the single payment compound amount formula found in the table on page 114 of the NCES Supplied Reference Handbook, or by using that formula written in functional notation and referencing the compound interest tables starting on page 116. In this video, we will solve it using the single payment compound formula written in functional notation and the compound interest tables. So in this problem, we are converting a present value into a future value, which is an important to know and to note when we go to reference the compound interest tables. The single payment compound formula written in functional notation for future worth is F 
is equal to p and in the parentheses we have some variable f that's defined by f over p i and n where the term f over p i n can be defined using the given values for interest and the period and the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCES supplied reference handbook so in this problem we are given the interest rate of 6% or 0 0.06 and a period in of three years referencing the compound interest table for interest rate of 6% on page 119 of the NCES supplied reference handbook we can locate the period on the left column uh, which is n equals 3 and work our way horizontally to the factor f over p which is the factor used to convert a present value into a future value and we find that the variable we get from this is 1.1910 now plugging this value into the equation we get f is equal to twelve thousand dollars times 1.19 one zero which is equal to fourteen thousand two hundred and ninety two dollars so the equivalent of twelve thousand dollars invested now at a six percent annual interest in three years is fourteen thousand two hundred and ninety two dollars so that's it and there are a few common ways individuals trip up on a problem like this uh, it is important to make sure that you are referencing the correct term when using the compound interest tables. In this case, we are looking for the term in the F over P column, which is converting a present value to a future value. But it's very easy to incorrectly reference, say, P over F or some other term in its place, which would significantly throw off our analysis. It is also very important to make sure that you are referencing the correct table when using the compound interest tables. Each table is notated and specifically defined for the interest rate we are working with. In this case, we are referencing the 6% table, but it's an easy mistake to make to reference some other table. Using terms in the wrong table will also significantly overvalue or undervalue the future equivalent. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.